Okay, I want to give another final video on uh, micro trenching. Uh, a lot of what you've seen already. I can't tell if this is concrete or it's uh, an epoxy. And in this case here, you see that they've the age of the or the age of the pavement sort of matches the tint of the uh, of this concrete epoxy stuff. And this trench line is again tucked right against the lip of the curb so you don't it minimizes the amount of chipping from traffic in this case here you're probably going to have occasionally a car come this close i'm sort of uh i'm about a, i'm walking on the curb and that would be about the middle of the bike lane in california but they ain't got bike lanes here in texas so here's where it starts to get a little bit sketchy. You see we're approaching an a major, a more major intersection. Here's the fiber marker. Here's one of those fiber bolts again. And here's the cutting that they did to splice from the main line into the, into the vault. But here's what starts to happen when you micro trench in a high traffic area and you can start to see that the trench line really really deteriorates as traffic drives over the concrete and chips it away this is a half inch to one inch gap uh, and it just looks like this is probably the worst, one of the worst examples I've seen. And as we get closer to the intersection, you can kind of see that it just continues to deteriorate. And you can see that the line that the trenching contractor used, it's uh, really atrocious. Now, you can see the traffic. So, in this case here, in all the cases that I've walked through, uh, these are public streets. So they are managed by the uh, city of Austin. And I suppose any complaints that a homeowner might have, they would uh, funnel them up through the city. And the city, should they desire, would enforce some kind of restoration clause in the contract with the whoever dug this did this trench and keep in mind in our neighborhood we are private streets and so the only people that will manage this trenching project and the resulting aftermath is us as neighbors and, and you can just see it trench continuing down the road it's highly visible in spite of it being one of the closest matches to the color of asphalt and it's just the nature of uh, the nature of the beast and so now you know I've I've done this type of work for 30 years, uh, designing, constructing, maintaining, and operating fiber and coax networks in many states, mostly Southern California, but across the United States, actually. And some of you might be thinking that, you know, this guy's a hammer, and to him, everything's a nail, which is partially true, but the only people that are going to keep our streets in good condition should we allow micro trenching and it is and it becomes widespread for whatever reason it's going to be us so as people start to meet with uh, city side in their communities in their private associations you know use these videos as a as a, a learning opportunity um uh, figure out what kind of questions you want to ask of city side about how they're going to build the network how deep 
their micro trench will be, what type of backfill they're gonna they're gonna do, uh, what what's their warranty for trench line defects, and equally as important, what the what the process is for installing fiber drops from the fibered side of the street to the customer side of the street where they have to either bore under the roadways or trench a uh, uh, micro trench out through them uh, again we're the only ones that are going to be able to manage this there's no one to call to help us uh, in terms of a, a city like i mentioned earlier so i hope this has been helpful for people <clears throat> it's not that these problems cannot be overcome but here we're in a major city in the united states and i'm showing you what i'm 95% sure was trenched in by uh, Google Fiber and they would have been building Austin in probably 2014. So this, this stuff is probably six, seven years old. And at the time they were building their own fiber network, they were flush with cash. Uh, my, my, my research at the time as a competitor to the company I worked for, they had $60 billion in cash. So. Uh, this work was not done by a company without resources, but it's done by local contractors or maybe out-of-town contractors that come in and do this type of work. And uh, my experience at running these networks and building them for years is that a lot of the quality is based upon the crew that is on the ground doing the work and the way that they're supervised. So again, I hope these have been helpful. For those of you who do not know what micro trenching is, these uh, three or four videos tell ex should show you exactly what it is. And again, no process is perfect. Um, and this by, you know, this is just one of the byproducts of um, putting in facilities in a neighborhood after the streets have been paved. Now I will say a, a good opportunity, a good opportunity to cover these things would be for streets that were going to be paved, like I know St. Michael's still has not been paved. It's, it's on the schedule, I believe, but that might be an opportunity if we were gonna take out the uh, the stamp concrete like they did, I think on St. John's and repave the road. Well, a lot of this might go away, um, but on existing streets that have been paved already, uh, this is what we could be living with for decades uh, after they come and go. So let's all be careful. And again, hopefully these have been instructional for people who have never seen what a micro trench looks like. But this is, uh, this is what it looks like in the real world.